All right, guys. Dougie Fresh. Oh, I haven't used that one in 20 years. Um, working out in the dark as usual. <laughs> Not much longer, trust me. Not much longer. I'm saving. Um, anyway, I'm going over a common um, misconception about engine RPM speed. Most people think that all four-cycle engines are supposed to be set at 3,600 RPM. That is incorrect. Snowblower engines, particularly the Tecumseh Horizontal Snow King line, are all supposed to be set at about 3,600 RPM via the manual. This Tecumseh vertical engine on this lawnmower does not get set that high. 3,600, and this thing would be racing like a NASCAR, okay? The manual on these say that they are supposed to be set at 2950 plus or minus 150, as far as I remember. So, with that said, if 2950 is the starting point and you can go up 150, um, the highest you're really supposed to go on these is 3100 okay lowest would be 28 28 is too low this one i could tell when i ran it it was a little too low okay i would say it was running at uh if i had to guess i'm looking for a clamp because we're going to need it. If I had to guess, I'd say it was running at about 28.50. Hold on one second. All right, clamps on. And also, to be fair, you can go a little bit higher than 3,100. Um, I like to go to 3,150. It makes it sound a little bit more powerful. And then when someone comes to listen to the, um, the mower, if they looked... At a few of them, and they hear mine, they're going to be like, damn, that one's got more power. So, I like to set mine at about 3150, but 3100 is right around where you want to be. You go up too much higher than that, it's going to burn oil faster. And it's going to wear out the oil faster. And you're going to burn oil quicker. But you will cut the grass nicer. So, let me show you what needs to be adjusted. There's fart man. You see why I call him fart man? Fucking car sounds like a fart going down the road. I, he actually thinks that's cool. I don't know. It sounds like a fart to me. Right? Nothing but a big fart just came down the road. There he goes again. Big fart. That, he's fart man. That, that's his nickname. I don't think he likes it. That's why he gave it the, gave it all. Anyway, here we are. Right under here where the carve is. There's... The spring for the RPM. Mm, hold on. Right. Hold on. It's hard to catch from here. With all these covers in the way. We'll get it. Right there. Right there. See it? There it is. That needs to be pulled forward a little bit to speed it up. If you push it back, it'll slow it down. I'm gonna hook the tachometer up to it. We're gonna see what it's running at currently. And then I am gonna bend that thing forward until we're at about 3100 or 3150. Give me one second. Just to be clear, that is a modified exhaust. It is against the law. That noise is um, what you would call a nuisance. Um, if someone did call the police, he could easily get a ticket for it. Of course, I'm not going to call the police for that. But if they're racing around here going 60 miles an hour and doing that shit, I call them. I had to call the police once already. And they stopped for a while, but they're still back at it. The thing is, you can hear those cars from a mile away. So that's why I don't understand why the cops don't deal with them from hearing them from a mile away. Because like I said, when I drove in the early 2000s, none of my cars were loud. And I used to get tickets all the time. So why are these dudes allowed to fly around with these 
loud ass cars with illegally modified exhaust and they get away with it no problem well it's because of the it's it's the times we live in you know what i mean unfortunately law enforcement <clears throat> does not have the support it had 20 years ago we've got this whole deal with defund the police a lot of people don't like the police anymore and it's just making it harder on them so unfortunately okay that's enough about that let's get to it all right we're all hooked up you ready to see where we're at let's start this up and see where we're at I said 2850 when I first got it on it was at 2880 we needed at 31 3150 so I got to raise it a little bit don't do anything or say anything to me I do not need to cut my fingers off all right anyway to adjust the speed you get in there with a pair of pliers this one's a pair, this one's a bit overkill a little longer it needs to be it's hard to see because it's dark out. But let me see it. Okay, it's right there. Get in there with a pair of pliers. Hang on. I gotta get a tripod. It's coming. The days are coming, my friends. Mm, I'll just bend it with a flathead screwdriver. Alright, see that? Yeah, right. See it? They bent it forward some. Be very careful when you're making these adjustments. It's easy to put your fingers in areas uh, you're not supposed to because you're not focusing. And also, if someone complains, oh, don't run that mower late. All that people are going to complain, and you, and you, you know, you you um, you know, you stop paying attention for that one second, right? And you put your fingers in the wrong spot for that one second. That that's the that'll change your life. Okay, that's one of the reasons I also can't wait to get my own place because. I don't need someone to tell when I'm working, especially on a piece of dangerous equipment with a blade that can cut your hands off. I don't need some person going, ah, oh, there's kids that live two houses down. You don't need to be running it at this time. It is, this watch is screwed up again. And I can't tell you the time because my phone's filming. It's probably about 8 o'clock. It's a Saturday night. It wouldn't matter anyway. But, um... Noise curvy is 9 p.m. on most days. On the weekends, it's laxed a little bit. Anyway, my point is safety first and do not let anybody ever distract you. Don't ever let anybody come around you, start getting you upset, start yelling at you, getting you all worked up. Because if, if that happens, it's very easy to get hurt easily. So if that does happen, walk away. If you have no other choice, go somewhere else, take a ride, do whatever it, it takes. Do not s sit here and try to work on a piece of machinery while someone's trying to argue with you. Because it, it'll become a disaster really quickly. Especially when you're in the middle of working on the components right near the blade. That can cut your fingers off in seconds. Okay, so that's my tip you know if you if you're still if you're a young kid and you're at, at home and you and you got mom and dad at home and they're yelling at you for some bullshit while you're in the middle of working on this thing tell them make it clear to them i'm working on a piece of machinery it's not safe 
I can easily hurt myself or easily cut my fingers off if I'm not paying attention. Please leave me be while I'm working on the machine. And if they're, if they're the type of person who can't get it because maybe they have bipolar or whatever and they just continue to flip out, you need to take, a pit, you need to take it upon yourself to walk away from the situation. Okay? I know I'm going back again. And I said I wasn't going to be doing that too much longer. But I had two girls come over here unannounced one time. And I had to ask them to leave. Because I didn't know what mood she was in. And I wasn't about to have that situation go on. If I had known ahead of time they were coming, I would have had been prepared. But you can't, you show up at somebody's house unannounced and you got somebody who's dealing with like bipolar and they're on that manic state you don't want people around them so I had to unfortunately push them away and it probably seemed odd to them at the time but it really wasn't it was for their own good and sad part about it was I never did get to hang out with that person because of that so, but, what are you going to do? That's the way the, those, the, the dice rolled, right? The dice rolled. And that's only one of many stupid things I did, so. Oh, well. Oh, well, right? All you can do is look towards the future and continue to think about how well the future is going to be and how the future is going to be bright, and that's it, so. Let's see what uh, speed this thing's running at now. You ready? We want 3,100. I'm going to say it's at 3,150. If it is, that's going to be good enough. Try not to let these wires get under there because then they'll get chopped up. Try not to get them near a muffler or they'll get melted. Done that plenty of times. Clamps. Where is the clamps? Give me the clamps. You know that show, Futurama, with the robots and the one guy's like, you want me to give him the clamps? The clamps. <laughs> anyway, let's see. Perfect. Slightly over 3150. The engine runs like a top. The next person that hears that thing is going to be like, wow, that thing runs nice. So, and that's how it's done. So, for one of these, between, you know, 31 and 3200 is good. 3600, way too high. It would be racing. Okay. Briggs, it's also about the same. Briggs is about the same for the lawnmowers, at least the Quantums, all right? Thanks for watching. Just a little tip on the RPM settings. If they're not always 3,600, don't think that. Don't assume that. If you don't know, either Google it or if you have the manual, look in the manual. I have the manual that breaks down every engine. It gives you the valve specs. It gives you the RPM speeds, high and low. You know, it gives you it gives you a whole bunch of stuff. You know, torque specs for the bolts, everything. But most of it you can find online anyway. Hey, if this helped you, don't forget to subscribe. Give me the thumbs up. Leave a reply down below, a comment. Let me know what you think. We'll see you on the next one. Later.